All right. Hello, hello, you guys. I'm Teresa Weinkoop, independent designer with Chocotour. And I am going to jump on here live real quick and talk to you guys a little bit about surfaces. Um, I've had a lot of people asking me tips and tricks about how to prepare surfaces. If you don't have a, you know, one of those Chocotour chalkboards, then how exactly do you prepare certain products. So I'm going to go ahead and first I'm going to get on here and make sure I got a good signal because you guys know I've been struggling with the signal lately. There she is. Hey, Tina. Um, I am going to jump on here really quick and give you kind of a little bit of a rundown. So, hey, sister. So hold on one minute. Make sure I've got a good signal. And then I can read all your guys' comments. All right. Can you guys hear me okay? Can you hear me okay, Tina? <clears throat> if not, I'm going to have to put, your, put my microphone on, so I just want to make sure you guys can hear me. I got a whole boatload of different... Um, surfaces that I'd like to go through with you and kind of give you a heads up on what exactly you need to do in order to prepare them. So I've been really battling with my internet lately and I'm hoping that it's okay. So hey, hey Shirley. Okay, so you guys are good. You guys can hear me okay. I have a decent signal. I am basically praying that um, NCC gets in here and gets my fiber optics turned on soon because I've been struggling big time. Hey, Sierra, I was just thinking about you today. We need to chat, Misty Girl. You got to get a hold of me, okay? Um, so I've been working really hard on... Okay, she says it's good. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, get started, you guys. So basically what's been going on is that I've had a lot of people asking me about... Um, how to properly prepare a surface for Chocotour. So it's really cool, you guys, because Chocotour can pretty much be put on any kind of surface. And um, what I'd like for you guys to do for me, thanks, Shirley, thanks, Tina. What I'd like for you guys to do for me is drop in some surfaces that you would like to chalk on, and we can talk about it, okay? So um, I've got a few here that we're gonna go ahead and prep together. Um, I'm hoping that you guys can see me okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and give you a little bit of a rundown on surfaces, okay? So, first we're going to start with um, different types of products and what it takes in order to chalk on these products. So, this is something called chalkboard paint, chalkboard paint, okay? Comes in two different types. Um, this is a brush-on type, and there's also a spray-on type. Okay, so my um, my experience is with chalkboard paint. I want you guys to understand the difference between chalk paint, chalkboard paint, and chalk paste. Okay, those three things are totally different. So if you can get yourself a pen, wood, glass, metal, perfect. If you can get yourself a pen and take some notes, this is going to be a lot of information. I'm going to cram into a little video, and I'm hoping that you guys can catch on to all this. And then be sure to drop as many questions as you can in this video, because I am going to touch on all of them. I mean, I really, can't, I really want you guys to understand the differences, okay? Sometimes you will see videos, um, a chalk tour videos that will talk about paint, and it's not, it's not chalk paint. That is chalk paste. These products you see here behind me, these are pastes. These are our chalk paste. The difference is chalk paint is permanent, okay? I'm going to reiterate that. Chalk paint is permanent. It is something that you are going to paint on a surface, and it is going to be permanent chalk paste, which is our products here in these little containers that you see. This is Chalkology paste. It is not paint. Chalkology paste is temporary. It is something that you can wash off of a surface. Now, if it is a chalk tour surface, then it will be completely clean and clear when you wash it off with water. If it is not a chalk tour surface, it might stain it. 
because it's not properly prepped, okay? So I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about, hey, Joyce, girl, thanks for dropping in. Um, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about how to properly prep, it, prep surfaces. And when I say properly prep, I'm saying to properly protect your transfers from getting destroyed, okay? So that does not mean that it's going to be preparing a piece of raw wood in order to be able to chalk it over and over again without leaving a stain. So we're going to take one piece at a time and we're going to talk about it, okay? So one, this is chalkboard paint. Chalkboard paint is something that you can paint on the surface, whether it be metal or wood or even glass. You can paint this on a surface and create a chalkboard super thick. It's kind of difficult to not lay down without getting um, without getting uh, paintbrush streaks on it. Hey, you guys, while I'm here, could you guys do me a favor and share this? This would be really cool if you guys can share it. We want to get this out to all of our chalk people, okay? So if you could share it, I'd really, really appreciate it, all right? Because if we can get it up to, um, let's just say, 500 views or not necessarily like people watching right now, but if we can get 500 views in this video, all of you guys that share of it, share it, um, I will send you guys a special gift. And Joyce, you know what kind of gifts I like to send. So thanks, dear. I appreciate that, Joyce. That's awesome. Okay, so chalkboard paint is, it's basically creates a surface that you can wash off uh, your chalk. And so far, I've had pretty good luck with it. You can paint this on something. It's expensive. You can paint this on a surface and you can wax it and it will protect it and I haven't had any trouble with it staining. So that's number one product, okay? Another product that we have that I wanna talk about is this right here is just um, interior, this is an interior primer, primer, it says interior paint plus primer and then it says scrubbable and washable. It's just a glidden satin paint, okay? There you go. This is this is the type of paint that I use to make my own, it's called chalk paint, okay? Again, this is a surface paint, not, thank you, Shirley. This is a surface paint. Thank you, Tina. Oh, and thank you, Don Marie. It's a surface paint. It is not a chalk paint to use on your transfers. Do not use this stuff on your transfers. This is strictly for a surface to prep a piece of wood or, or a piece of glass or something like that in order to chalk on it. Now, what I do with this product is I make my own chalk paint. If you are interested in that, drop chalk paint, please. Thank you, mom. Um, drop chalk paint, chalk paint, please, in the comments, and I will send you my private recipe to make your very own chalk paint. What is chalk paint? Hey, Heidi, thanks for dropping in, girl. Um, what is chalk paint? Chalk paint is something that you can you can paint on a surface, such as glass or even a piece of wood that is um, varnished or painted already, all right? Um, what it will do is you can actually take this, you can print it, I mean, you can paint it onto a surface and then you can wax it and then you can make it um, a surface that accepts chalk paste really well. Mm. Oh, thanks, Tina, for sharing to Heidi. That's awesome. I appreciate that. Um, so what it does is it's kind of like, it's kind of like this, but only it's a lot cheaper. And the cool part about it is, is that you can use any type of latex paint. Um, I like to use a satin finish because I don't like it super glossy. But what you do is that you will make mix this with my ingredients to make your own chalk paint and you will basically create this type of a surface in a different color all right and it works really cool because you don't have to sand um something that might have like a burnish on it uh it works really really awesome yes joyce i'll be glad to send you my recipe um you can send you can like for instance if you buy a piece of furniture that has like a varnish on it, 
you can paint this directly on it without sanding, without prepping it. It will um, allow you to be able to wax right over the top of it, and then you'll have a printable surface that you can literally take any of our chalk pastes and um, print on it, and it just it works fabulous. It works really awesome. I've refinished tons and tons of furniture. It really works kind of like this. This is Ann Sloan chalk paint. This little puppy right here cost me 30 bucks, okay? I have made, and it only comes in certain colors. I make my own chalk paint <coughs> with um, mixing special ingredients into it to make my own chalk paint. Chalk paint is, um, it's really awesome because it will allow you to, you can literally like paint on glass or um, all kinds of different surfaces and it works super cool. So anyway, enough about that. Hopefully you guys understand that. Okay, so those are three different types of surfaces that you can do. Another one is stain. Um, I like to use stain because what stain does is it allows me to, thanks guys for sharing, you guys are amazing. I love it, I appreciate that. Stain will allow you to take a, draw, a raw, raw piece of wood and um, stain it to a different color and then you can wax on it and then you can chalk on it. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's just regular stain finish, like so. The other thing that I'm going to talk about is this. This is what I'm talking about when I say wax. This is what I use. I also have another one. Um, Ann Sloan makes a wax, but it's a lot more expensive. This is, uh, Tina, you just bought this. $9.99? I think these are $9.99. Comes in two different colors. One will be called natural and one will be called special dark, okay? So um, uh, natural is just something that you want if you don't want it to change the color. It might change it a little teeny bit darker, but not much. And then special dark is something that you will use if you want it to look a little bit aged, okay? So those are the two products that, um, Tina, thank you. I appreciate you sharing with all your friends. That's awesome. So those are the two different types of waxes that I always, always, always talk about. Yes, $9.99 for one of these. You can buy them anywhere. Fred Meyers, Walmart, um, Home Depot, Menards, all those different places have it, okay? Hey, Hyde, thank you, girl. All right, so when I put my wax on, I use these brushes. Tina, I was telling you about a brush that I use. This is called a wax brush, and I have two of them. I use one for my dark and one for my light. They're really awesome. Um, the bristles don't fall out. These are Ann Sloan brushes. They're really expensive, but um, you might be able to find one in say like a Home Depot or something. But I'm telling you what, these were worth the money. Um, I found a coupon on the internet. I just search Ann Sloan coupon. I found a coupon and I was able to uh, get my Ann Sloan brushes with um, a discount. So these are the brushes that I use. I'm going to do some some prep work for you guys here. So if you guys want to hang in with me, then I'm going to show you guys exactly how that all works. All right. Okay. This is another product that I use a lot. This is Rust-Oleum Clear Enamel. Um, this is a glossy finish, but I also have another one that is a matte finish. And this is just kind of something that you can use over the top of your chalk when you make your chalk art, when you make your chalk um, chalk couture type prints, some people will ask, can you make it permanent? Yes, you just have to spray a light coat of something like this over the top of it and it works fabulous. I also wax over my surfaces too. That's another thing that you can do. You can wax over them. So if for some reason you want to put it say in your bathroom, um, which you're a little bit worried about moisture, then uh, waxing over the top of your design actually makes it protected so that any moisture will actually drip off of it versus um, cause your chalk to run. And I have never, I 99.9% .9 of the designs that I do, I don't put anything over the top of them. I hang them all over my hotel. People touch them. And I mean, even on my windows, I have them on my front door window and I've had it there since June of last year and I've never had to worry about it that doesn't look doesn't look scratched or you know or distressed or anything like that it looks perfect and the way I clean my doors is I use a um, 
a microfiber towel or something like a Norwex towel. You can buy cheap ones in Walmart or whatever, but I use those to cleat my uh, fingerprints and stuff like that off the windows, but um, it doesn't affect my chalk at all. I can wipe right over the top of it over and over again. It looks fabulous. So, so that's basically my tips and tricks, you guys. Um, but what I want to do while I'm here with you guys is I'd like to do a little bit of raw wood prep. And while I'm here, please do me a favor and drop any questions you guys might have or might be thinking about, like how do you prep certain products, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and jump in here and show you guys a couple more tips. So I got us some raw wood. This right here is just, um, I like to go to Home Depot and I buy like a full sheet of plywood. I go and I get like an eight foot by four foot sheet of plywood. This is a three quarter inch plywood, the three quarter inch sanded plywood. Okay. And the cost on that's going to cost you about 35 bucks and it's four foot by eight foot. And if you go in there with a plan of exactly how you want them to cut it, they'll cut it for you. Now my Home Depot here at Minot, North Dakota, they cut it for free. They don't charge me anything. Um, but I ask, I know exactly what I want and I know I, how I want it laid out. So like I'll cut maybe a few 12 by 18s and maybe a few um, 9 by 12s and a few 8 by 8s. And I'll take all my pieces and I'll say like, I want those cut into this size or this size. And they're really awesome. So as long as you can figure out when your store is not busy, then whether it be late at night or early in the morning or at lunchtime or whatever it is, if you can find their not busy time, they're really usually pretty good about, um, about going in and cutting it. So that's what I like to do. So that's, um, that's my number one tip. Okay. So basically what this would cost me is 48 cents. This eight, eight inch by eight inch piece cost me 48 cents. So I'm going to show you guys, how I prep this um, on Sundays I like to do my prep work because I'll sit there and I'll just prep a whole bunch of stuff does it need to be ink can you spray clear coat and call it good um, Yvonne that's an awesome question no I do not prep um, coffee mugs and no I would never spray clear coat on something that would have any kind of food or possibly your lips touch it so I don't um, I use our inks, or I also use something that is called um, enamel. And there is a enamel that you can purchase at um, Hobby Lobby. Um, I'm sure that that um, what's it? Michaels also might carry it too. But I will be glad to if you will remind me just by dropping a comment in here. Send me enamel link. Okay, if you'll drop that in the comments, then I will send you a link to the enamel that I like to use on glass and on ceramic. Our Chocotour ink is works really, really good on certain ceramics, but there are some porcelain glazes that are really super, super hard, and our Chocotour ink will not work because what will literally happen is, is it will, in the oven when you go to cure it, it will slide off the surface. There is, we've had a lot of problems with it when it comes to certain types of um, mugs, certain types of glazes. So it is really kind of a test thing. Um, what I like to do is I like to, hey, Belle. Hey, girl, I, I wonder if you got my package. I never heard from you, so I wasn't sure if you got that. Um, anyway, so what I like to do is I take a mug and I'll print the enamel on one side and I'll print the ink on the other side and then I put it in the oven and I, they both cure exactly the same. So with that said, <coughs> I will um, see how they cure properly. Some will work on one, some will work on another. So that's how I do it and then once I figure out what the, what the curing ability is for both of them, then, um, then I know and I will use that specifically for that mug. But all mugs are not created equal. So that is just something you've got to understand. Yes, you got it past week. Cool. I'm glad you got it, Belle. I hope you liked it. 
Okay, so I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about how I like to prep raw wood. There's, um, this is going to be how I like to teach people in my classes. So that means I do it quick and easy, dirty, down and dirty kind of thing, all right? So um, I like to teach people in a way that they can do it quickly, it's going to be dry quickly, and it's going to be ready quickly. So this is how I like to do it. I like to, um, so there's three different colors that I personally love to use. I like to use this darkest brown you can get, and I like to use white, and then I yet like to use black, okay? You can use any color. So if you're trying to make a blue sign, obviously you're gonna, lose blue, you're gonna use blue. But I'm gonna show you guys how um, my favorite way to do it is, and I'll just take and I'll add a little bit of black, a little bit of brown, and a little bit of white. And um, I like things to look sort of natural and rustic. So you guys don't mind, right? It's Sunday. It's, it's wine day on Sunday, right? We're allowed to drink wine on Sunday. <laughs> All right. So um, what I like to do is I like to take this a little bit of water and I just put it in um, one of the small containers there. And then, and then I will buy these big bags of chip brushes because they're super cheap. I don't know, you can get like, I think I'd pay like six, six or seven dollars for a whole entire bag of these brushes. So this is just raw wood. It has, it's only, I sand in the edges because when they cut it, they usually, it's usually pretty sharp and splintery. So I take my brush and I get my brush wet. Okay. And then I'll dip it in the, in the little bit of paint and I kind of just dab it. Okay. So what I'm going for is sort of a barnwood style, barnwood, I guess it is. So then I'm just going to take and I'm just going to add a little bit of white. Okay. And it's, this one is kind of wet. I just go on a little bit of white. Then I'm going to add a little bit of black without any water. And I'm just going to kind of just add a little bit of white. Okay. And so I'm going for a look that is um, very rough and rustic all right so i'm just gonna add a little bit of that okay and then i'm going to probably add a little bit of brown and so i'm just going to get a little bit of brown like so now you guys have to play with this it is literally your own style and what you're after i happen to be doing some classes and i'm doing sort of a barnwood look so that's why I'm after this, and I am prepping for my classes, so I'm just going to show you how I do that. I'm just adding a little more brown, a little more white. You want to try to stay away from anything that's starting to look muddy. Okay, so there is, I'm starting to like it here. I'm going to make sure I get all my edges, so I'm going to flip my brush around. So this is basically taking my, you know, 49 cent piece of wood and I have prepared it almost, and it's like taking me what, 25 seconds ish to chalk it. So I have myself a really cool natural looking board. All right, so now I'm going to show you how that how easy that was. You see that? Okay, so it's super simple, super simple, and it's going to dry and it's going to look natural. I can either paint a solid board if I want, or not. But I'm not really into that. I don't really care for that. So I'm going to mix up a few colors now, and I'm going to go ahead and hit my edges. Very simply, I'm just going to lighten up these edges here. I'm just going to cover them up. All right. Now here's how this is going to work, you guys. I am going to literally like, it's, it's super basic. I'm not doing anything that I don't want it to look like, how do I say, solid. I'm going for a stained kind of look. Okay. So it's just a more water, more 
you know, I'm just going more water, more paint. There's nothing super talent, talented about this. You just throw it on there, all right? It is literally almost ready. I'm just going to add a little more brown, a little more white, a little more brown. I don't want it to be the same. Okay. So I just taught my whole entire class how to create this piece of wood that looks sort of like barn wood. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit my edges, kind of blend it up a little bit. That's it. I'm just kind of hitting those edges so that they don't um, smear or anything. You guys, that's it. Okay, I've done it. It is ready to go. It is ready for my class. They're going to love this. They're going to think this is a fabulous piece of wood and it's nothing super special. So that's one way that I like to do it. Okay. Anybody have any questions about this? It's almost dry and my class would be literally like, this is what I do as I go, well, I will ask them to go ahead and paint their board. I'll show them how to paint their board. They paint their board. And the next thing you know, I say, whoever's ready, whenever you're done, then you can go over to the table and you can pick out which transfer you want to do. So they hustle. They hustle to get their board ready. Looks really cool. Um, another thing that I'll do is I might take a little piece. This is something that I teach people. Let's make a knot. Ooh, I made a knot. And then I go like that. Look at that. Okay, so now I made a knot. So now I'm going to take a little bit of black and a little bit of brown. Might come over here, and I'm going to make a knot. Make a circle. And you go like that. And you go like that. And they got a knot. And I just make a circle. And I make a knot. And they're literally like, oh my gosh, that's like so cool. If I don't like it, I just brush it back down. This one looks pretty good. I like this knot. So now I got a few different spots that look a little bit natural. If I don't like it, I can just brush it back out. You guys, when this dries, it's going to be really cool. You're going to see. So I got dark spots, and I got light spots, and I got a knot. That's it. Okay. When you see it dry, I'll show you guys. Okay, so that's one way that I will prep for my classes. Let's see, I'm gonna put this down here on the floor. All right, let's do another one. Here is another way that I like to do. Tina, I was talking to you about baby wipe method. Okay, I'm gonna take this and toss it over there. All right, baby wipe method. The other thing that I like to do is a baby wipe method. And at this point, I don't have any baby wipes. So here's another thing I like to do. I like to grab a sponge. This is just a dish sponge that I, it looked like this. And I cut it into four pieces. And now I take a, I take a spray bottle and I fill it full of water. Okay. I fill it full of water. So it's full of water now. And then I will squeeze out the water. So it, squeeze out the water. Okay. And then I drop it on the floor. So I have to pick it up. Hold on. Okay. Okay. So, so now I have a baby wipe method. This is basically the baby wipe method. You're going to take this baby wipe or sponge and you're just going to pick up a little bit of acrylic paint and you're going to wipe it on. Now what the baby wipe method does is it allows you to put on a stain. This is just stain, okay? You're, on, you're not going for a painted look. You're going for a stained look. So I like to keep it as wet. I like to keep it wet and put on the paint. And you are literally staining that wood, okay? So I've got some black and I got some brown here. And I like to use a either a paper plate or a palette like this because then it's kind of, it tells me a little bit about whether or not I've got too much paint on there. I don't want a dark spot all of a sudden. So I just really like keep pushing it like this until it looks like it's just um, dirty, but not necessarily does have paint on it. And so I'm literally just going to stain over the top of this wood. That's all it takes. Okay. 
so now I'm basically at that point where I've got a stained piece of wood. It's going to still look very natural. It's going to show all the natural um, colors of the wood. You don't want it to use too much water because you don't want it to get really super wet. Now you can literally like stain your edges like so. Staining your edges like this. Okay. The only reason why you don't want to use too much water is because it just takes longer to dry. Okay. Choo-choo. No, that wasn't a choo-choo, Tina. That was actually our... Um, do you wax these boards before chalking? Yes, Denise, I do wax, and I will show you all about waxing here in one second. So, um, okay, so choo -choo, that wasn't a choo-choo. Um, at 10 o'clock and at 6 o'clock and at noon um, here in Bowbells where we live, because it's a farming community, there the fire alarm goes off, and it sends it off. And the reason why is because it tells the farmers that um, – at noon, it's time to go eat lunch, and at 6 o'clock, it's time to go eat dinner, and at 10 o'clock, it's time to go home and get your butt home. So that's what that alarm was that went off, that siren that went off. So, um, no, it wasn't a choo-choo. That is way cool. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, but it's, um, it's our life. So it's kind of cool because I try really hard to get all my videos done by 10 o'clock, and tonight was one of those nights that, my stupid phone kept going off and off and off when I was trying to um, get on for my live. So, I, you know, my sister lives and my friends, a lot of my friends live uh, on the West Coast. And so um, it's like two hours difference. So 10 o'clock for me is 8 o'clock for them. And it seems to be a good time for me. So that's why I do these, these late night videos, right? All right. So. There you go, you guys. That is the stained look. Okay, so you have a stained look here. I'm going to show you. And then we have our barn wood. Okay, here's our barn wood look. All right. And this is, this is good. And then this is our stained look. Okay, so those are two ways to prep surfaces. We're going to go back and we're going to wax them all here in just a second. But I'm going to keep keep going so that's one or those are two ways all right the other way to go is our stain and the reason why I don't really choose the stain look is because a lot of people that are um, doing my classes they are you know they're working in their house and stuff and so this kind of stain stinks a little bit so it's not really desirable but it does really do a beautiful job so if it's something that when i am prepping um that i don't mind the smell and everything then i will go ahead and do the stain so i like to use the sponge um it is super messy and it's stinky and all that but it is it's really a, a beautiful product so i like to use the stain Okay, so basically with the stain, I like to use a sponge. Um, you're just going to, if you've ever stained anything, you're just going to go through and you're just going to lay it on there. Um, it's a totally different look, but it really depends on what you're after, you guys. So that's why I'm trying to show you a few different ways of prepping your, your products. Um, if you get yourself, a, say, a piece of, lumber or even a lot of those home i mean uh walmart type signs and stuff that you can buy for like four dollars they're raw wood you may want something dark so you may have to use a stain um a lot of your acrylic paints and stuff you might be able to find something dark enough that is going to allow you to get that look but not be stinky because i'm going to tell you what this minwax stuff is stinks it's very smelly um it doesn't bother me because you know I'm you guys know if you do know me you know probably that I am a um, I do a lot of like house refinishing and stuff like that so this stuff doesn't bother me as much but it might bother you so if you're really sensitive to those kind of smells and stuff then it might be something you don't choose but to do so anyway so basically you're just gonna lay it down and wax stain 
Okay, so here is what we have. Now, when I do my classes, I always stain these boards for my customers. Um, I don't expect these ladies to stain their wood. So I may stain them for them, and then I might teach them how to wax them. So there you go, Mocha, super duper dark. Um, it looks gorgeous. It will look fabulous with a, you know, with a lot of our designs. And um, that's what it would look like if you stained it. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that set. But do you see that? See how that looks? It's very pretty, um, very finished look. And that's another way to do it. I would, of course, I would go around and hit all the edges and stuff, but I'm not going to do that tonight so that I can show you guys something else. Where did my lid go? Oh, you guys are supposed to be watching me. Where the heck did my lid go? Because you know me, I'm kind of silly like that. I'll forget stuff. All right, now at this point, I'm going to definitely change my gloves. I did pretty good. I only got a couple little dots on me. Not bad. Close up the stinky stuff. All right. So, what else do we got? Cool, folks, appreciate it. Yay. Alarm, alarm. Cool. Okay, cool. That's way cool. Choo -choo. Um, any other questions? Do you wax the boards before chalking? Denise, I'm going to show you that in just a second. Is that acrylic paint? Yes, I use acrylic, and I also, this is just regular acrylic paint, yes, that I was using on all of the browns and blacks. It's just cheap. I just buy this. As, look, I paid $2.99 for that, and I am a, every time I go to town, I'm always buying something with my 40% off coupon at Hobby Lobby. So I probably got that for 40% off. So yes. That was acrylic paint. Um, let's see. Got any, You guys got any other questions? Tell me if you guys have any other questions. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys about waxing, okay? And I am not talking about waxing our legs because um, there's a lot of videos out there, and mine is not one of them that is going to show you that. So if you're looking for waxing um, for your legs, then you're at the wrong place. Ain't happening here. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's start with this one. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys about waxing. I talk a lot about waxing and what waxing is all about. Oh, I got another way to do it. I'm going to do one more quick stain. This here is our chalk paste. We already talked about chalk paste, right? So chalk paste is another way that I like to um, prep piece, a piece of wood. So here you go. Raw wood again, chalk paste. So this is another thing that is super awesome. My favorite part about this is, number one, you don't need gloves because it's chalk paste. We already know what happens with chalk paste. It washes off with water. There's no smell. There's no worried about your fingernails or anything. It washes right off. So this is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite ways of prepping um, a piece of wood, you guys. Why not get out of all that stinky stuff and all that chemical crap and just use our personal chalk paste? So I just take a little bit of chalk paste like so on one of our, on, on, on a sponge, not our sponge, but remember I said a dish, dish sponge, you can cut it into pieces of little pieces of four. And you can literally just spread it on a piece of wood. Watch this, you're gonna freak out. It's so simple. And again, this is just gonna look like, sort of like a stain. And it also, it's literally like, it washes right off your hands. So, and it doesn't even stain, it's super cool. I love it. So it's one way for you guys to prep a piece of wood and it works really cool. So. I just add a, I just take a wet sponge and I just wipe it in a little bit into the chalk paste and then I just rub it on. Okay, watch this. And you, it's your choice on how thick or how thin you make it. So I'll show you in two different ways here. I've got it thin at the bottom and I've got it thick at the top. 
So I'm doing this so that you guys can see really pretty much your options. But yeah, I have to say, out of all that stuff that I just showed you, this is not only the easiest, it dries the fastest, and it doesn't stink, and it doesn't, even though I got it on my fingers, it's going to wash off. Because it's just chalk. Right? So. Okay. And the more you the more you work with it, you can literally like add a little bit of water to it if you want. Not a lot. You can add a little bit of water to it and you can lighten it up. If you don't like it thick, then you can lighten it up a little bit. Or if you want it thicker, then you can just thicken it up. If you want it to just be a stain, then you just do it light. So I flipped it over and I'm using the little scrubby part to just kind of like take off any thick parts. Check this out, guys. So it is totally ready to chalk on. And it's dry and it's awesome. It's ready. So, and it doesn't stink. <laughs> so that's another one of your guys' um, options. Now, yes, you want to go around and you're going to hit your edges like that. You know, that's your choice. Um, and of course, you're going to want to do that. But I'm with all in the amount of, of camera stuff. So I'm going to try to keep moving forward for you guys so you can see a little bit more. Okay, so I got a mess, but I can wash this off with water. And, um, of course, I don't have a sink right here to wash my hands. So you're just going to have to trust me. Okay? And I don't have a... <laughs> Let me see if I can... I know that you guys believe me, but I don't have a um, rag. I think I have a rag. Did I get some on my face? I think I got some on my face. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't even have a rag. Hold on. One moment, please. <laughs> All right, you guys. So tell me what you guys think. If you guys have any more questions, is it permanent? Yes, Tina, this would stain a, a regular piece of wood just perfectly. But one of the things we're going to do to make it permanent is that we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to add some wax to that. Okay, so... Just so you guys know about our chalk pastes, um, our chalk pastes are natural, all natural pigment. There's no chemicals or anything like that in it. So, you know, to be honest with you, this blue may stain me a little bit. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to use some soap and scrub it down and I'll get it off there really good. So, yeah, I guess some of our chalks may stain a teeny bit. And um, I'm hoping I don't look like a smurf for an entire week. But I haven't used that dark blue like that before. So who knows? Maybe I'll look like a smurf. But I'll look just as good in a smurf color as I do in any other color, right? <laughs> okay. So now we're going to talk about um, prepping these so that they're ready for our transfers. All right. So I'm going to grab these pieces that I have. This one's nice and dry now. This one's dry. So we did this one in acrylic paint. We did this one in stain. So here's what I like to do. <clears throat> this is something that you're going to find in your paint department. And it is like a, it's like a green scrubby, but only it's gray. And it is really super rough. Okay. It's really rough. And um, I would say it's kind of like a sanding sponge or a sanding scrubby. So you're going to look for that. If you have any questions and you can't find it, message me and I'll see if I can help you. Um, I'll send you a link to what it is, what the product is. But I love these. And so what I like to do with them is I kind of give it a once over over the top of my wood. And what it does is it takes any rough roughness off the edge, I mean off of the wood. Um, because sometimes what will happen is, is that your wood will kind of like get, how do I say, hairy, 
<laughs> There's no other way to say it. It's kind of fuzzy, I guess. After you stain it, it will get a little bit fuzzy, and it's caused from the moisture. And so um, what I like to do is I will take this, and I'll just give it a light sand over the top of it, and it looks, I wish you could feel it. It feels so soft. Um, anyway, so that's what you're going to do. Yeah. And so I also like to hit the edges a little bit, and it's just going to make it, like, perfect. So it looks really good, and it feels super smooth now, and now it's ready for wax. Okay. So I have a couple different options, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how both of these work. Okay. So I have the natural wax, and I'm going to take this natural wax, and the way that I like to lay it down is... Um, I know I got out my waxing brush. Okay, so the way that I like to lay it down is I like to lay it down with my waxing brush. So we're just going to pop this off. And um, and I like to just give it a good amount right there on it. I make, see how you can see it's really thick on there. And then I'm just going to take, and I'm just going to brush it right over the top of it. And I just really, really work it in. Okay, I just work it in. Now, if you don't have one of these waxing brushes, don't worry, because another thing that works almost almost exactly the same is a piece of t-shirt material. I always used a piece of t-shirt material until I got one of these fancy waxing brushes, but tr truly, it is it is just about the same. You just, I mean, it works just the same. Um, I like my waxing brush because I don't seem to get it on my hands as much, and I also... Um, I don't know. It just seems to not get used on other stuff. You know, when you have a, when you have like one of those waxing rags, it seems to like, you never know what it's being used on, but at least this way, I always know that my waxing brush is only going to be used for wax. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay. So now I'm just going to work it in like so, and that's all I do. Okay. And I just really, really work it in and then I let it sit. Okay, so I don't know if you guys watched how it got dark, but um, that's all waxed and ready to rock. So I'm just going to leave that set for a minute, and then I'm going to go ahead and do this one. So it feels a little fuzzy, so I'm going to take my little my little um, sanding, um, whatever you want to call it, a sponge or sanding scrubby, and I hit my edges, and then I'm just going to give it a quick sand over the top of it and it just like I said it just makes it smooth hey Keisha I'm surprised you're still awake girl <laughs> it's late <laughs> all right so now I'm going to take my um I'm going to take my my um clear wax again and I'm just going to wax over the top of it again rubbing it in Rubbing it in pretty hard. And I just work it in. So I don't know if you guys can notice that when I was waxing, how it started to get dark and stuff. But from here, can you see? It is going to look really natural. Now it feels like, when I touch it, it feels like the outside of a candle at this point. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit for a little bit, okay? While this is setting, I'll hit my other ones. Okay, so, so far I've done a couple. And I'm going to go ahead and do this one. Now, on this one, I'm going to go ahead and it feels really smooth because that's the difference between using the chalk and using those other surfaces, I mean, those other types of products. The chalk didn't take as much water, and so it didn't cause my... Um, my wood to actually get fuzzy like the rest of them did so i'm just going to go ahead and use one of this i'm going to use this dark one so that you guys can see a little bit about how the antique one works so watch this so this one is the um the dark one and what i'm going to do is i'm going to antique this wood ever use shoe polish and stain a board nope i have not i imagine it probably would be pretty cool but i have not done that so so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and lay this dark one down. And so what this is going to do is it's going to antique it for me. Okay. 
I'm just going to change it so it doesn't look quite so bright. Again, I like to really give it a good brush on like so and work it in. Okay, so now I want to show you guys. It kind of took my blue and it made it oh, just a little bit more hmm. darker and a little bit antique here. But watch, I'm going to show you a little bit of something that I like to do. I like to take sort of a sanding block. I'm going to just show you on the edge so you can see what I'm talking about. And I give it a good, a good brush down. Okay, so I'm really scrubbing it down. So as you can see, it's a bright spot. Okay, see the bright spot? Now watch what happens if I add this dark to it. Okay, I'm literally going to just rub this in. Okay. So say I'm going to hit these edges. And now all I'm trying to do is just sort of get these edges to be a little bit darker and you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a second. I'm going for something that looks a little more of a weathered look. Okay, just going to add a little bit of dark stain to it or the dark wax to it. What I've done here is basically I've just darkened it up and you're going to see here in a minute when I when it starts to um, when I start to buff it what I'm really talking about doing. It looks lighter on the edges, but it's actually going to get really dark here in just a second. OK, so you'll see how um, it will create that weathered sort of a look. I wish my camera showed really exactly how it looks on this because it doesn't look quite like that. But I'm going to show you here something. Okay. So I've added this wax. Now I'm going to take my sponge that has... Where to go? That nasty stain on it. Hey, Penny. Ugh, okay. So this is the one that I have that's that stinky stain on here. And I'm just going to hit those those white points, the parts that I added lightness to. And I'm just going to kind of add some stain to it. And you guys can literally take and you can mix the medias a little bit and create that feel of different colors and it is just going to start to create texture. So I'm going to show you this here in a second. You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. So can you guys see the edges, how they're darker? Um, I don't know. I can't tell on the camera if you can really see it. But from here, it looks really weathered and blue and browns and yellows. And that's all it really takes is for you to just kind of play with different types of the medias. It will literally be prepped and ready to go. I love how it turned out. So that is basically what I've done there. And so once we get it all chalked and stuff, you guys will see it's going to be really cool. All right. So now I'm going to take something that's wax, already, already waxed and I'm going to buff it. And I'm going to show you what that looks like here in a second. Um, let's see. Okay. So like here's one that I've waxed. It feels like 
a candle, okay? It feels like kind of sticky like a candle would. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a t-shirt. Now here's how you know. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to try to get it. Okay, so there's the shine. Can you guys see right here? It will give you a fingerprint. Can you guys see the fingerprint, the shiny fingerprint? Can you see those fingerprint marks? What that fingerprint mark means is that your wax is ready to buff, but it's not prepped and ready to chalk yet. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of chalk, I mean, you're going to take a piece of t-shirt material, and you are going to... said something about watching someone staining wood with shoe polish and wasn't sure who it was. Okay. So anyway, basically you're going to take a t-shirt and I'm buffing it. Okay. And all I'm doing is I'm going to buff one side of it. So this is what I teach at my classes. I get people to buff their wood. All right. So now I want to show you just with that amount of buffing, can you guys see the difference between non-buffed and buffed. So I just buffed it for just a little tiny bit. This is a wood piece of wood that has been waxed, not buffed, and buffed. You see that? So all I did was buff it just for a second. And that's what happens. Now it is ready to chalk. That is the reason why we wax it because this surface right here is literally, it's not solid. This surface over here is totally ready to chalk. And if you have a mistake on it, it takes just that little bit. You guys saw me, you guys saw me wax it and now you saw me buff it. It doesn't take that much, but it takes just a little bit of, of buffing like so. So I've got it all buffed. And now, now it is ready to chalk. See that? That's what I wanted you guys to see. Okay. So now it is totally smooth. And it is absolutely 100% ready to chalk. It is safe. It will protect your transfers. Nothing, nothing is going to cause it to be yucky. But this was a regular piece of dry wood, plain old wood, and it is now prepped and ready to chalk. Only half is ready, LOL. Nope, I got both sides now. Both, both sides are ready. I did both sides, okay? So that's it. It is ready to go. Now I'm gonna show you another one. Remember this blue piece of wood? Okay, so it is now, um, it is now very, it's kind of not not quite ready, but it's been, it feels it still feels sticky with the wax, and so now we're gonna buff it. T-shirt, and we're just gonna buff it. Okay, and I buff it on the, I buff it on the um, with the green. Okay. Okay, so I wish you guys could see this. Hope you can. We have this side is all buffed. This side is not. And if you look at it, you can see your fingerprints on it. Can you see my fingerprints on it? So I'm going to buff this side now and I'll show you. Doesn't take much. Just get yourself... A bunch of chunks of t-shirts and get your customers to buff it and then before you know it it will be so perfect and so ready for your customer to make a beautiful piece and it won't stain now look at that you see that that's all it takes you guys to be able to take a piece of wood plain old plywood and make it ready to be able to chalk on. And I'm going to tell you right now that if you chalk on this, it is so shiny and it is so protected 
that if you make a mistake, you can get it off. Watch this. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm going to try to show you. I'm going to try to show you this. Okay. Can you guys see the water standing on top of that? Can you see the water standing on it? That means that I would literally be able to get that water right off. So that is why we wax it because our, I don't know if you can see the water on it, but it is like, let's see, I can try to add a little light to it. Can you guys see that? Can you see the water droplets sitting on top? So that is why we wax it because if you have, if you spray, if you put chalk on this, you can literally wash that off. So it won't stain because now you have prepped it to where you can literally chalk right on top of that surface and it is not gonna, not gonna be a problem. So that's why we wax guys. All right. So this piece here, all that we did was add, um, remember this is the one with baby wipes stained. Okay. So this one is a little bit wet still and it was done with, quite a bit of water and a sponge and acrylic paint. So what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna add a little, we're gonna take my little sanding sponge, and we're gonna lightly sand over the top of it. Okay, I'm just adding a little bit, I'm just sanding over the top of it because I don't like that roughness to it. I want it to be super smooth. So it didn't take me a lot, but it's ready. Okay, and then I'm just going to, yeah, it's good. So now I'm just going to wax this. Okay, now I'm going to, I'm going to do two kinds of wax with this. I'm going to do, show you a little bit of this. I'm going to do clear in the middle. Okay, I'm going to do clear in the middle. All right. Okay, so I got clear in the middle, and then I'm going to do dark on the edges. I'm gonna do dark on the edges, watch this. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I just want it to be nice and bright in the middle and I don't want it to be super dark. And you'll see this here in a second. So just so you know, when you get your, when you get this finishing wax, it is, um, you know, it's not like super duper dark, but what it does is it just adds a little bit of antiqueness to it. Now, as you guys know, I did not let this one dry like that, the rest, the rest of them, but that's okay. It's just, um, I'm just trying to show you a little bit about what wax is all about. So I'm rubbing it in really good. because I really want it on here good and thick. And I'm hoping on camera, it's gonna show you a little bit about the brightness in the middle. Does it show the brightness in the middle and that darker on the outside edges on the camera? Now, as you guys can see, it's not super shiny like, like the other one was because I didn't let it dry, all right? So do a beach picture on that piece with uh, added shells to it. Okay, Bridget, you know what? You got it, girly. I will I will um, do a beach piece on that blue piece of wood this week in one of my lives. I promise I will do a beach piece, okay? So now that I have let that dry just a teeny bit, I'm just going to go ahead and throw a little bit more wax on here. And I'm going to let this dry before I buff it out like I did the others. And I'm only hitting the edges because I want this to be dark on the edges, okay? So we're just going to go ahead and let that dry, just like I did the other ones, and you guys will see what happens when I buff this. Now, I want you to see how thick I put that on. It's thick. It's on pretty good. Can you see? Like over here? It's pretty thick. So I'm going to let this dry, and I'm not saying 24 hours. 
I'm just letting it dry a little bit before I begin to um, before I begin to butt that. Okay. So there we go. When it comes to finishing a few pieces of wood, I did. I don't know, a few pieces, showed you a bunch of different techniques when it comes to finishing stuff. It's really super easy to get it all ready and prepped and ready. You don't have to um, do all that with plain wood. You can actually buy a old frame or whatever. Um, drink your wine before you spill it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Hoping to get, ew. I think I got some wood in my wine. I call that oaked, right? If you get wood in your wine, wood chips in your wine, does that mean it's oaked? <laughs> You're right. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Anyone have any questions? All right. See, let me see. I know that somebody else asked about what other kind of, so let's see, glass. The only thing about glass, um, somebody asked about glass. The only thing about glass, if you guys want to prep glass, the only thing you need to do is you need to make sure that glass is, um, you fuzz the hell out of your transfers, okay? When you guys do glass, you got to fuzz, 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 because if it sticks super hard to a clear, smooth surface like glass, then when you go to peel it up, it's going to do two things, or it could do two things. One, it could stick so hard that it makes your transfer stretch. Two, it could um, it could actually leave a little bit of the blue part of your transfer on the glass, which I've never had that happen before, but it's because I just fuzz, 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 and stick it down when I know for a fact that the, um, when I know for a fact that it's not gonna be too sticky. So I just keep on fuzzing until I know. Okay, so what else? Um, do you, oh, fiber, yeah, it's fiber, Yvonne, yeah, definitely fiber, okay. Do you have to clean the wax brush, or do you leave the stuff on it? Um, I do clean my wax brushes about every six months. <laughs> I keep them in a Ziploc bag so that they don't get anything on them, but I don't, I don't wash my wax brushes. I've never had any problems with them, and I just use them over and over again, but every once in a while, about every six months, I wash them, and I just use Dawn dishwashing soap, and I just clean them up really good, so that's what I do with my wax brushes, but um, they work super awesome. Again, these are Ann Sloan brushes. Um, love them. You can buy them on Amazon and basically type in um, Ann Sloan, uh, Ann Sloan um, waxing brushes. Tina, when it comes to metal, it depends on the metal. Um, the most important part about metal, are you talking about like, for instance, like those gray metal signs that you buy at Walmart that are like $4.99 that are um, galvanized metal? If it's something like that, you are going to want to um, wax it. You're just going to do it exactly how I did it. You're going to rub on the wax. You're going to get a nice light coat on there, light coat, and let it dry. The, the, if you can let it dry for like 24 hours before you begin to buff it, oops, before you begin to buff it, then um, it's going to have a perfect surface and ready to rock. Um, it should totally lay down your chalk just nice and you won't have any problems with your transfer sticking to it or anything like that. But I would make sure you buff the hell out of it and use a, um, use like a t-shirt or even your, that buffing cloth that you bought today, um, that you showed me that picture of, that would be perfect. Um, that will work great. Okay. What else? Any other questions? I have sad dust all over me, you guys. Hmm. Any other questions? Glass, nothing, anything. Okay, so metal, wood. We've already gone through all the wood. Um, do you guys have any other ones that you are wondering about? So just remember, when you wonder whether or not you've waxed it good enough, like this one, I mean, buffed it good enough, just take your fingers and go like this. And if you doesn't leave any fingerprints on it, like mine's not leaving any fingerprints on it, then it's, then it's buffed really good, like mine is. So if it's still leaving fingerprints on it, then buff it. Just buff it. Dry piece of T-shirt material like this, just literally just 
go with the grain and give it a good buff and then it's ready to go so this one i'm excited we should definitely chalk this chalkboard okay so are you talking about regular chalkboard or chalkboard paints what's your question what's your question tina is it okay so like Put it this way, if it's a chalk couture chalkboard, then you do not need to prep it. Nothing needs to be done. What about t-shirts? Okay, so there's no such thing as prepping on t-shirts. All you need to do is make sure that you're using our um, chalk couture ink on our transfers. And there's no prep that needs to be done. You just need to make sure that you lay down the ink very thin, okay? It is, does not take even as much as it, it takes chalk. You just put down a nice thin surface on t-shirts and then it needs to dry you need your your ink to dry to touch before you hit it with the um <coughs> before you hit it with a t-shirt press or an iron and if you have any questions about that <coughs> if you have any questions about that Bridget drop in um drop in the comments um cure t-shirts and i will remember to get a hold of you and i will tag you in my t-shirt video that i have done okay tiles tiles is a lot like um your chris your uh coffee mugs like i talked about earlier so watch the replay on the on this and in the beginning i talked about coffee mugs and that's what tiles are all about when it comes to porcelain or ceramic tiles now if it's glass um, you're gonna watch the watch the part that I talked about with with glass or with um, enamel paint. Um, those are the ways you want to be able to do the um, the glass or tiles. If you buy a chalkboard from the store, okay. So if you buy a chalkboard from the store, Tina, um, all I can say is that we tell everybody that if it's not a chalk tour chalkboard, then you should probably wax it. And um, again, you already know how to wax. I showed you how to wax, and that's really, truly the best way to protect your transfer. So really think about this as protecting your transfer. So if you wax something, then you know that um, it's going to protect your transfer. So I would just watch the, watch the front part of our um, video here, the, the video that I just did. And yeah, that's what I would do on a chalkboard surface. If you're really, if you're really um, sure that the surface is not the is not the paint on that ch chalkboard is not going to come off, then you may be okay. But um, I always say wax is best because wax isn't going to hurt anything, and as long as you're willing to just take the time to wax it and buff it really good, then you're good. You're going to be safe and it's going to be okay. Curing t-shirts is you want to, um, I've got to know how to do that. Okay, so yes, I will tag you, Heidi. Um, curing t-shirts is, I will tag you in that video too, Bridget. Chalk paint recipe, please. Yes, Laurie, I will definitely um, send you my chalk paint recipe. Um, the only other thing that we haven't talked about, you guys, is something really important, and it's really super important. This is a water bottle. This is a um, powder-coated water bottle, okay? Powder coating is a process that people do on metal, okay? It's super important that you guys understand this because you guys may look into um, doing a powder-coated surface like these water bottles or coffee mugs or things like that that are, have this powder coating on it. And if you put our ink on it, it will print on it and it will be gorgeous and it'll be beautiful and you will love it. But there's something that's me too what? You have to say what it is you want, Lynn. Love, love you, dear, but I don't know what you mean to me. Um, it's something that's really important you guys have to understand. Um, we cure our, our ink in our ovens all the time, our at-home ovens all the time. And it works awesome and it does make it permanent, but there's something you have to understand. Powder coating can be um, poison to you. If you do this, if you take our, a powder coated surface and you put it in your oven and you cure it in your oven, fumes 
with the the powder coating fumes will get into the oven that you're that you cook your family's food with and then the next time you cook a lasagna in your oven that those powder coating fumes will basically um, become active again and will go into your food it is not okay for you to cure a powder coated surface in the same oven that you are okay you guys i got you lynn i got you denise i got you that you are gonna eat food out of so this is me because i love you guys i am protecting you and i'm telling you do not put anything that is powder coated in your oven plastic is bad in your oven plastic is bad so if you want to use our chocotour ink it's not the ink that's the problem it is the surface this is powder coated and powder coated is plastic so if you want to cure something that is plastic then you do not use the same oven that you're going to cook your food in you can buy could you cure it with a heat gun you can cure it with a heat gun the problem with the heat gun is that it's not even disbursement over the surface and so this i'm going to show you guys what i do my stuff with this is hold on okay so this is what i use <clears throat> This is a new wave oven, all right? And it is a small convection oven. And I bought um I bought a two pack of these. You got I got one on uh basically I bought it online and it was a special deal that was a buy one get one free thing, okay? I bought one for my home which I love it. It makes super awesome like when you, if you guys have ever bought those like frozen hash browns that most like, you know, your fast food places, they deep fry them and make those crispy frozen hash browns, right? Well, I love them, but I don't eat anything that's deep fried. So I bought one of these to do stuff like that. in. so like I make pizzas in it. I make like whole chickens. I do like um, roasts in it. I do like all my french fries and things like that that i don't want to deep fry i use this oven for it but they had a buy one get one free deal now this is what i use for all of my curing of any coffee mugs or wine glasses or anything that's powder coated or anything like that i do not want to put anything like that in my oven that i would cook my food in so i have this in my craft room it is what i do what i use to do I make shrinky dinks. I do all kinds of cool stuff. You guys, I'm going to do a shrinky dink class this, class this weekend or this week. Sometime this week, I'm going to do some shrinky dink stuff. Anyway, um, with that said, that is, in my opinion, the best way for you to cure um, any kind of craft stuff. This is what I use. A lot of people will go to the thrift store and they may buy a toaster oven. You can also buy toaster ovens at like Walmart for like 25 bucks. And that's great. The only thing that about the toaster ovens is that they're not tall like this. I mean, check it out, watch this. I'm gonna show you this. This is why I bought one of these because look at this. I can put this in here, these big tall ones, and look how much room I got. I can put a ton of them in there all at one time and I can bake them all at the same time. It's really cool. So, that is how I do my curing of any kind of ink. I don't ever put it in my oven. So there you go. Okay, that's a new wave oven is what that's called. And they're really cool. And they're lightweight and they're super easy to deal with. And um, all right, so you guys have any other questions? Very interesting. Could you cure with a heat gun? Yes, Yvonne, I think I answered that. Um, yes, you can cure with a heat uh, a heat gun, but the thing about a heat gun is that there's no way to know that you've done a full cure on the design and got it totally even. You may have like a light spot or a, you know, you might have a spot that is not so good. 
Um, how long do you leave them in there? Okay, so when I do mine, um, it totally depends on totally depends on the surface. Um, I like to use mine. I do mine for like 300 degrees for like 45 minutes, and then I let it totally cure cold. Okay, go all the way down to cold. So basically what I do is I put them in cold, I turn them on, I leave them in at 300 degrees, and I do it for 45 minutes. And then I wait, I let them totally go cool again, and then I kick them back on for another 15 minutes. And here's why, is because as a screen printer by trade, I understand that one of the most important parts about um, curing ink is that if it goes on thick, it's you have to make sure that it doesn't just cure the outside edge like it'll crust over and then the under part of that ink doesn't get totally cured. So what I like to do is, um, is I like to use a convection oven because what a convection oven does is it blows air where a regular oven just heats. So since it blows air, then it actually dries the ink and then it cures the ink at the same time. So um, it just does a super special job on it. And that extra 15 minutes makes me feel better about it. So I have never had anything wash off. A lot of people have. So I don't know what, what to tell you except that um, I've just had good luck with it. So that's what I do. So anyway, anybody other have any other questions you might we might have you guys? I feel like I have prepped. So remember that if you guys go buy stuff at like the thrift store, um, my rule is to make sure that everything is stable. So like I love to buy old things and I love to buy old painted surfaces. I'm going to show you something really quick that I have. Oh, I got one more surface I want to show you too. Hold on. One moment. I don't know if I can get it. Hold on, you guys. I'll be right there. Okay, so just wanted to show you. Just kind of give you a little bit of a heads up. So, like, this is a super old um, pop bottle. It's an old pop bottle thing. And uh, an old pop bottle case. And so... The metal is rusty, the wood paint is old and kind of chippy, and so it's a Pepsi container, which is really cool. So if I was going to chalk on this, see that? If I was going to chalk on this, then what I would do is I would, I would sand it lightly um, with, my, with my sponge thing or my like scrubby pad thing here, and then I would wax it. But... I would not chalk on this if I didn't do that first. And the reason why is because I don't want any of this little tiny bit of paint to possibly stick to my transfer. So that's how I will take something that's like from a garage sale or from a thrift store or anything like that. I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to lightly give it a little bit of a sand with it just to make sure that it's smooth and I don't have anything loose on here. And then I am going to wax it. And it will, like, literally they take everything and adhere everything and solid. And it would be ready to wax on. So that's pretty much how I do everything is wax. Wax is my friend. If I want it to look like this and stay like this, then I'll wax it. So that's pretty much it, you guys. Um, look at that. Isn't that cool? That's perfect for my samples. For all my sample chalks, you know, my little sample chalks. It is a pop bottle. It's a pop bottle crate. All right. Okay, you guys. Um, if you don't have any other questions, hello, Aunt Shirley Hess. <laughs> all right, you guys. Thank you all for joining me tonight. And if you guys have any questions, please drop them in the comments. Because if you have the questions, then somebody else might have the questions too. And that way I can answer them for everybody. And I sure, sure, sure appreciate you guys jumping in and hanging out with me tonight. 
I am going to go and put my jammies on and um, chill for the evening. So um, love ya, you guys, and thank you so much. See ya. Bye for now.